Hey guys and welcome to another fun and easy machine learning video on support vector machines. So the other day I was walking through the park where I saw a lot of people with their pets, dogs as well as cats. And then I came across this strange creature, it was really challenging for me to tell whether it was a dog or cat. But I eventually figured it out that it was a cat groomed like a dog. Now if it was challenging for me to figure it out, imagine how difficult and challenging it would be for a computer to precisely classify between a dog and a cat. A really great algorithm for these types of applications is the Support Vector Machine Algorithm or SVM. It looks at the extremes of the datasets and draws a decision boundary also known as a hyperplane near the extreme points in the dataset. So essentially, the Support Vector Machine Algorithm is a frontier which best segregates the two classes. So how does it work? To understand SVMs a bit better, Let's first take a look at why they're called support vector machines. So say we got some sample data over here of features that classify whether an observed picture is a dog or cat. So we can, for example, look at their snout length or their ear geometry. If we assume that dogs generally have longer snouts and cats have much more pointier ear shapes. So how would we decide where to draw our decision boundary? Well, we can draw it over here or here, or like this. Any of these would be fine. But what would be the best? If we do not have the optimal decision boundary, we could incorrectly classify a dog with a cat. So if we draw an arbitrary separation line and we use intuition to draw it somewhere between this data point for the dog class and this point for the cat class. These points are also known as support vectors which are defined as data points that the margin pushes up against or points that are close to the opposing class. So the algorithm basically implies that only support vectors are important, whereas training examples are ignorable. An example of this is so that if we have in our case of a dog that looks like a cat or a cat that is groomed like a dog, we want our classifier to look at the extremes and set our margins based on these support vectors. So we have d plus, which is the shortest distance to the closest positive point, and d minus, which is the shortest distance to the closest negative point. And then we have the margin of a separating hyperplane, which is d positive plus d negative. The line or decision boundary that segregates the two classes is commonly referred to as a hyperplane, because SVMs can be used in multi-dimensional datasets, and the data points are referred to as vectors as they have coordinates within this space of data. So what we discussed so far is also known as Linear Support Vector Machines or LSVM because the classes are linearly separable. But what happens if we have a dataset that is not linear separable? So say we are presented with data that looks like this where it looks almost impossible to use a single line to separate the two classes. We can use a function to transform our data into higher dimensional space so you can see over here, we go from one dimensional to two dimensional space. We can apply a simple polynomial function to get a parabola. And now you can easily see how we can draw our hyperplane. We can do the same for this dataset where it's easy to draw the hyperplane or line, but for a machine, we'd use a function to transform our data from two dimensional to three dimensional feature space. Now the only problem with transformation into higher dimensional feature space is that it's computationally expensive. We can use a kernel trick to reduce the computational costs. A function that takes as its inputs vectors in the original space and returns the dot product of the vectors in the feature space is called a kernel function, also referred to as kernel trick. Using a kernel function, we can apply the dot product between two vectors so that every point is mapped into a higher dimensional space via some transformation. So essentially, we use it to transform a non-linear space into a linear space. If you look at some popular kernel types, here are some popular kernel types that you can use to transform our data into high dimensional feature space. They are polynomial kernel, radial basis function, RBF or RBF kernel, sigmoid kernel, amongst others. Unfortunately, choosing the correct kernel is a non-trivial task and may depend on specific task at hand. No matter which kernel you choose, you need to tune the kernel parameters to get good performance from your classifier. A popular parameter tuning technique includes k-fold cross-validation. We'll deal with some of these parameters in our Python labs. 
So the advantages of support vector machines are that they are effective in high dimensional spaces. They are still effective in cases where number of dimensions is greater than the number of samples. They use a subset of training points in the decision function or support vectors, so it's also memory efficient. Support vectors are versatile, so different kernels can be specified for the decision function. Common kernels are provided, but it's also possible to specify custom kernels. We can add kernel functions together to achieve even more complex hyperplanes. The disadvantages, however, of support vector machines include if the number of features is greater than the number of samples, the method is likely to give poor performance. Support vector machines do not directly provide probability estimates. These are calculated using an expensive 5 fold cross validation. If you take a look at the applications of support vector machines, the support vector machine algorithm has numerous applications and can be a quite popular alternative to artificial neural networks or ANNs. Here are some applications from published journal papers. So we can use support vector machines in medical imaging. There's one application for SVM based regression model to study the air quality in urban areas in the city of Oviedo in Spain. Support vector machines is also used for image interpolation as well as medical classification tasks. In the financial industry, support vectors are used for time series predictions as well as financial analysis. There's one paper on the application of neural networks mixed with support vector machines in coding theory and practice. There's also for pattern recognition for machine fault diagnosis, which also uses support vector machines, as well as page ranking algorithm and text and object recognition. Okay, so that is it from me. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Click that bell icon if you'd like to see more machine learning tutorials. And please don't forget to support us on Patreon. If you'd like to download the script to this video, please click the link down below and download it for free. So stay tuned to the next lecture where we'll implement a support vector machine in Python. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture.